Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Here I am today in beautiful La Perouse in Sydney. Um, so I'm here today to talk about the arrival of the French in 1788. So not everyone knows that back in 1788 when the British landed, the French also landed here. That is of course before they mysteriously disappeared. So this is a really interesting story and yeah so stay tuned for this one i just also want to say a huge thank you to my sponsors for today's video my true ancestry i'll tell you a little bit more about my true ancestry later on but for now let's get into la perouse so la perouse was born in august 1741 and he was a french naval officer and the explorer and uh, he joined the Navy when he was 15 years old. So in 1785, he was appointed by Louis XVI. Yes, that's the last King of France to lead an expedition around the world. So many other countries were initiating similar voyages at that time. And La Perouse really admired Captain James Cook, who'd already sailed around Australia to follow in his footsteps. So there were two ships commissioned for the journey, the Astrolabe and the Boussole. So La Perouse had a crew of 114 men, including 10 scientists. Also, interestingly, a young Napoleon Bonaparte, who was 16 years old, applied to be on this voyage. Um, he was originally considered, but eventually they decided not to have him on board. But can you imagine how different that um, history would have gone if he'd have been there? <laughs> So the Astrolabe and the Basol left France in 1785 and they went everywhere. They went to Chile, Easter Island, and then the Hawaiian Islands. They went to Alaska where they unfortunately ran into some heavy currents and they lost a barge and two longboats carrying 21 men. They then sailed on to California where they examined the Spanish settlements. The ships then headed for Asia where they went to Macau, the Philippines and Korea and then onto Russia and Japan. They spent some time in Russia and one of the crew actually disembarked here in Russia and made his way back to France, but the rest of the crew sailed on. So the next stop was the Navigator Islands, Samoa, on the 6th of December, 1787. But just before La Perouse left, the Samoans attacked a group of his men, killing 12 of them, including the commander of the Astrolabe. 20 men were also wounded. So they arrived in Australia on the 24th of January, 1788, but really high winds kept them from landing for a further two days. So they actually landed on the 26th of January, 1788. That was actually just in time to see the British leaving. So the British had been here and had decided that they would leave for Port Jackson, which was in their opinion, a better spot for a settlement. Um, as they were leaving, they offered the French any assistance that they could. Um, and then left. So the French remained camped here for a further six weeks. People who escaped the British settlement occasionally made it down here to the French and begged them to take them home with them, but uh, to no avail. <laughs> so during their time here, the French built a stockade, planted a garden, um, built an observatory and made geological observations. Um, they also buried their priest here who died he was injured back in Samoa and he died from complications from that injury and they've buried him here. Initially the grave was just marked by a tree stump but more recently they built a monument. Before the French left Australia they gave a few letters to the English to send home to France. Here's an excerpt from the last letter of La Perouse. Botany Bay, February 7th, 1788. You will find by my journal that I have arrived at Botany Bay without a single person sick on board either of the ships. As the English have fixed their settlement at Port Jackson, they have entirely abandoned Botany Bay. I have a kind of entrenchment on shore with palisados in order to construct our longboats in safety. They will be finished at the end of the month. This precaution was necessary against the Indians of New Holland, who, although very weak and in no great numbers, are, like all savages, very mischievous and would burn our boats if they had the means and could find a favourable opportunity. They threw spears at us after having received our presence. I shall sail from Botany Bay on the 15th of March and I shall take care to lose no time till the month of December when I expect to arrive at the Isle of France. 
On the 10th of March 1788, the Basol and the Astrolabe left the area and headed north towards New Caledonia. The sailors from the first fleet watched them leave. Um, but this was the last time that they were ever seen again. However, some evidence has come up that has allowed us to piece together the story of what actually happened to them. First though, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my true ancestry. So if you've done a DNA test, then you can upload your data to my true ancestry to learn about your ancient origins. Maybe your ancient ancestors were explorers just like La Perouse. So you can discover your ancient relatives by comparing your DNA to thousands of ancient samples from real archaeological sites. My True Ancestry has samples covering 10,000 years of history and over 85 ancient civilizations from around the world. So I uploaded my DNA results there and learned that my closest ancient populations were Saxon and Frank. Pretty cool, huh? Their website has loads of great features, including DNA spotlight, haplogroups, maps, timelines, and more. So if you have any privacy concerns, you'll be glad to know that My True Ancestry is GDPR compliant. So all the data is tracked carefully from user upload until it's destroyed. This means that all uploaded data is deleted once it's processed and My True Ancestry doesn't share your data with anyone. So head to MyTrueAncestry.com. They have seven different subscription plans and the most basic one is free. So you can try it out just for no cost. Thank you again to My True Ancestry for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. So let's get back to the story and find out what became of La Perouse. So there was actually a rescue mission sent. It, um, they left France in September 1791 and followed the proposed path of the La Perouse expedition. In May 1793, they sighted Santa Cruz, now part of the Solomon Islands and another uncharted island to the southeast. This island was Vanacoro. Keep this island in mind because it's actually important. So the French didn't approach Vanacoro, only recording it on their charts before sailing away to explore the Solomon Islands further. Louis XVI is recorded as having asked on the morning of his execution in January 1793, any news of La Perouse? It was not until 1826 when an Irish sea captain, Peter Dillon, found the evidence that managed to piece together what had happened to the La Perouse expedition. He was on Santa Cruz when he purchased some swords that he believed belonged to the La Perouse ships. Um, he made some inquiries and heard that two ships had been wrecked off the island of Vanacoro years earlier. Dylan then sailed for the coral atoll of Benacoro, where he found cannonballs, anchors, and other evidence of the remains of ships in water between coral reefs. He brought several of these artifacts back to Europe. So remember the crew member who left La Perouse back in Russia to go home? Well, he identified the pieces as all belonging to the Astrolabe. From the information Vanacoro inhabitants gave Dylan, a rough reconstruction could be made of the disaster that struck La Perouse. In 1964, they also found the Basol. So both ships were wrecked on Vanacoro's reefs. Um, the Basol first, and then the Astrolab was unloaded and taken apart. Then a group of men, who were probably the Basol's survivors, were massacred by the local inhabitants. According to the local inhabitants, some of the survivors um, used the remaining pieces of the ship to build a two-masted ship and sailed in a westward direction, but they were never seen again. Also, two men remained behind, but um, apparently left a few years before Dylan arrived. So that was the early 1820s. So none of them were actually ever seen again. So here's one more interesting little tidbit for you. In November 1790, so that's just two years after the La Perouse expedition went missing, Captain Edward Edwards, who was in command of the HMS Pandora, had sailed from England with orders to comb the Pacific for the mutineers of HMS Bounty. In March of the following year, they arrived at Tahiti and picked up 14 Bounty men who'd stayed on that island. They then went on in search of the Bounty and the leader of the mutiny, Fletcher Christian. So Captain Edward's search for the mutineers ultimately proved fruitless. He never found them. But when he was passing the island of Vanacoro back in 1791, he saw some smoke signals um, erupting from the island. However, he was so focused on his search for the bounty and the mutineers, and he didn't think that they'd be advertising their whereabouts, so he ignored the signals and sailed on. 
However, there's a huge chance that those smoke signals were actually a distress call from the survivors of the basol and the astrolabe. So um, Edwards actually may have just missed his chance to go down in history. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and learning about La Perouse. Please let me know if you've got any thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks again to My True Ancestry for kindly sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And I will see you soon in my next video. Bye guys.